When you're thinking about buying a home, the first thing that most people do is reach out to a realtor. However, there's a crucial step before this that you should actually be doing, and that's getting in contact with your bank or a mortgage broker. Why, you might ask? Well, before you start looking at homes, you need to know how much mortgage you can qualify for. Unless you're paying cash, then just call me. Whether you know it or not, mortgages can be extremely confusing because there's so much to consider. It's much more than just finding out where you can get the lowest rate. Because I'll tell you right now, if that's your approach and you don't have an extensive knowledge in the other aspects of what to consider with mortgage financing, you're probably gonna make a huge mistake which you won't realize until it's too late. But I'm not a mortgage professional myself, so I thought it would be best to bring in a mortgage professional to discuss all the important mortgage topics ranging from the differences between using a mortgage broker versus a bank, understanding the differences between a pre-approval and pre-qualification, what's better, a fixed or variable rate, uncovering some common mortgage myths, and more. And that's why in this video, I interview Krista Mitchell, CSO of Pineapple, a mortgage company that operates in the Canadian market. Just a quick background on the company, they've currently got over 700 brokers within the network and have recently expanded into BC. Pineapple utilizes cutting edge cloud-based tools and AI driven systems to enable its brokers to help Canadians realize their ultimate dream of owning a home. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What are kind of the differences between a mortgage broker and a bank? First, I'll say it's not really a broker versus a bank, but just a lot of the idea that people have when they think of those two things, because brokers actually have access to a lot of the institutional banks. You know, we have access to TD, Scotia, Senior League, email, but we also have access to monoline lenders, private lenders, alternative lenders. So really a broker should be finding the best option for that client at the time in their lives. You know, a lot of times we'll be telling a client, don't go with Scotia right now because you want, you just told me that you want to throw your family in the next two to three years. And they have a, a bigger penalty to actually get out of the mortgage. This product of here makes more sense for you. But then a lot of times the bank product makes the most sense for this situation. And, you know, if you look at the bank specialists, unfortunately, they only have their products to sell. So great products, but it's not always the best fit for the client. And we have seen a lot of face specialists, great training ground, great points for them to really get the knowledge and experience they need. But then into the broker side when they're ready, because they don't want to build a book of business for themselves and not for a baby. One of the things that I see a lot of people get confused about, and again, that's why I want to have that direct line of communication with the broker, the bank, or wherever that may be, is what is the difference, well, number one, between a pre approval and a pre qualification, and what's the importance of understanding that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So, a pre qualification is running the information. You could use some other data points, you know, like credit score. Um, you know, AVM for property that's put in on the system, um, you know, do a, a scraping of the bank accounts to see that the money is there that from the job and to the civil customer to let them know how much they're qualified for. But it's done through technology and data analytics. A pre-approval is actually something that we are sending through to a lender and getting that rate hold or why and some of the lenders will even qualify them to say, okay, they are qualified from a bank. So ideally, pre-qualification definitely allows your customer to go on, you know, the Pineapple website, fill out all their information and come to you and say, based on the information I inputted and the data that Pineapple was able to pull on me, I am pre-qualified for this amount so you can get shopping. But really do want that pre-approval in your hand because you know that based on the information that we've sent documentation to a lender, they're actually willing to lend you that amount. So you're saying if I go online and I just type in the calculator, that's not good enough? No. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> and unfortunately, that, that's the, the problem. And that's why we believe at Pineapple that it's so important to have great relationships with our realtor partners because customers still go to realtors first and X always been, you know, you want to buy a house to see a realtor. That's just sort of how it works. But really your first step shouldn't be seeing a trained mortgage professional that actually runs the true numbers, pulls a credit report, gathers some documentation on you and truly gives you that break toll from a lender and says, I'm confident that this is what we're going to get. Because there's nothing worse than, than when you bring that client to a hold, they fall in love only to find out that they don't actually qualify for a flex and they thought they did. And it is the unintended consequences of that. Yeah, that's, and that's a conversation I have a lot as well because it, it becomes very difficult after that if you've already set your expectations somewhere and you've gone out and looking at home and thinking that you were uh, pre-approved for a certain amount and then you don't end up going through with the deal. And yeah, it's not, a, it's not a fun situation for anyone, honestly. And so I want to ask you about a couple of different, I would consider them myths or maybe misunderstandings that people have 
one of those being about your credit score. So I know some people, for instance, they're already chatting with a bank or a mortgage broker. And I always ask if I never want to step on any toes, but I always offer a second opinion, right? And sometimes I hear people say that they're concerned about working with somebody else because they've already had their credit score polls and how much truth is there in that? Like, is that something people should be scared of or? So um, Equifax and TransUnion are the two major suppliers in Canada uh, credit bureaus. They understand when you're going through the mortgage process, you're going to have to have your credit score possibly full more than once. Um, you know, whether you go into a bank first and then you decide to get a second opinion from a broker and then the lender who actually gets your file, they're pulling a credit bureau lots of times for their compliance. So as long as it's done within a 45-day window, their score is only affected once. So for anything mortgage-related within a 45-day window, on Equifax 100%, I'm pretty sure Chance Union follows the same sort of philosophy, but when you also use Equifax, you have 45 days. Anything more to truly, once that first hit comes, you get the little dropping of credit score, and every hit after that for that uh, time period it doesn't affect your score at all. It will show us the hard hit on the credit hero. It should, and then the score. And is there like a specific number of points that it goes, or like a range, typically? Yeah, so we finally will see, it depends on the time to closing, quite frankly, because lenders want to see enough data credit bureau within 30 days of closing. So if you purchase a home that's not closing for 90 days and there's a credit bureau pulled right now, you will have to get one again with a small hit to your credit bureau. But again, the net Equifax is built in algorithms and, and understanding that if it's the same lender who's pulling it close to closing or again in a short period of time, it's not going to affect your score as much. But Four or five times, you probably see it hit on your credit bureau to rip the one we've processed. Or don't go to four to buy different people. Don't, don't, and, and I will tell you, you don't want to go to a bunch of different people. You know, I tell brokers, sometimes the rate shoppers will come through online and, you know, you pull a credit bureau like this thing, spike could say for you to do so, and you'll see four other brokerages and two banks. That's probably not the best clients to help in that they're looking for the best rate, probably can't truly help them with their financial goals because they're reach shopping. Mm-hmm. You know, they're trying to find the best uh, cost, which is not always the best solution for them. So you don't want to see four different brokers, but a lot of times we'll see that they went to a bank, they came to a broker, and then whatever lighter gets their file, we'll pull one cheap bureau. Sounds like what you're saying is, again, I think we have very similar values in the sense of if people are doing all this rate shopping and they're so cost so kits, maybe they're not the ideal clientele or the ideal like avatar that you guys are looking for, somebody that's more value focused and cost focused is how I like to put it. Absolutely. You know, there is a place for the rate shoppers. There are some brokerages that make their model buying down the rates to the lowest possible, but they don't meet with clients. They don't sit down and do a financial plan with them. They're not taking the time. I know of one person out east who has that model and they never will talk to the customer on the fault. They just don't make enough to do that. So if somebody's willing to do a lot of their own work and they're comfortable, but I feel like that's a very small percentage. And then when you see, you know, certain companies building out know, that direct consumer model leads online, it's the same thing. They're gonna buy down rates, they're having to give cash back to the customer. So it's that customer is not gonna come back to you at real. They're gonna go search that again. So be truly trying to build your book of business as a great clientele that will send you referrals. I agree with you, I think, for some. You, you want to look for those customers that see the bound moves services that you're providing to them. Yeah, I think, and I think you think that a really good way of that. There are certain people that it will be, it will be a score. He'll go out, they'll view their own research, you get their information. Personally, I just want to focus on what I'm really good at and then outsource the rest of it. For instance, I'm not going to do my own home inspection, right? I'm going to hire the home inspector. Absolutely. I mean, I can't do the mortgages anyway, but I'm going to suggest that they go to somebody who's knowledgeable. So, but there's some people who want to do it all themselves, and that's okay. And that's okay. But there's a fit to them. There's a fit. There's a fit for everyone, and there's lots of room for us all to be competitive. But in talking to you today, yes, we're very aligned in our values and 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 finding customers to really truly help them through the whole mortgage cycle that they have their entire lives, mm-hmm. and, and watch them through all deep phases or their family and homes and become a part of real life to help. On your end, I don't know if you see this a lot, but something I see and I try and educate clients on, even though it's, you know, it's not my face, but I try and help you guys because of the fact that I feel when it's not coming from your mouth, even though you're getting the right information, sometimes they can be your bias. But I say, don't always look to the very lowest rate. Like if you're going to pay 0.1% difference, like look at the whole picture because I understand there's other things going on, right? Like prepayment penalties or breaking the mortgage or other things of that nature. 
Japan, when we look at the total talks, it can be substantial. What are you doing three, five, seven years from now? If we're not looking at the picture in that sense, then you're really kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and that's it. The first question that most mortgage brokers get when a client calls them is, what's your rate? What's your lowest rate? Because that's all they're conditioned to, to know. They're getting a mortgage. What's your rate? What do I pay? But you're absolutely right. You know, do you have plans not paying on this mortgage? Do you get bonuses at work? Are you expecting some money to come in where you can bring that mortgage down so you need that prepayment option? Um, is it a no frills mortgage, which, you know, gives you that lower rate? Do you plan on growing your family or downside to achieve this for years from now? If that's the case, you don't want to go into something with an IRD penalty. You want something with three months interest is dead. So having that holistic picture of your plans, where you see your life going and being prepared is really, really important. I think that often it comes back to the education piece, right? As I should take the time to have a conversation with these people. And also like you were talking about before with the mortgage brokers, but finding out their why, because that's going to drive a lot of the decisions. So personally, a lot of the things I'm looking at when people is, you know, we can potentially give you the best option, but what's your risk talk, right? Is it the variable rate? Like, is that actually, do you a higher probability to be successful? But if you can't sleep at night, you can't put a price on it. Well, absolutely. You know, a lot of times people ask what's better, the so fixed versus the variable. And that's really a very personal decision. You know, I've been in the mortgage industry for 20 years now, and variable until the last year has always won over the fixed rate. However, even though knowing that in my life, I always pick personally a fixed interest rate because now I know what I'm paying on my mortgage bi-weekly and it's that set cost. So really it's a personal decision and what your first tolerance is because if you see what's happened in the last year with, you know, the decline in, the, in prices and the craziness that happened during the pandemic with people buying clothes in the low interest rate environment and and the increase in rates over the last year, we kind of a lot of tough discussions with customers because they're their mortgage went up by the bit. And that's the first time that's happened in 20 years. But, you know, making sure that the they're well-educated about the differences prior to making that choice versus just being put into that mortgage because they qualify at a lower raise in set. Yeah, I think that was definitely, I think, uh, drove a lot of people at a point in time, just that variable was lower, let them qualify for more, the payments look better, and nobody expected. Nobody expected it. Nobody, nobody yeah. Nobody, nobody in North America you know, predicted what we've seen over the last year when it comes to the craziness of the the race that I'm seeing with the Bank of Canada. I just like to say that it's our turn with the pandemic. You know, we saw a lot of other industries get hit really, really hard during the pandemic. And I remember friends of mine planning on trying to find things to do with my time. They're not working and we don't have to, to rest. None of us in this industry, I feel the last year was just our turn. We just took a little bit longer to hit us through the next mm-hmm. pandemic. Right. So touching on terms of cost is it expensive to get a mortgage whether it's mortgage broker a bank an online portal yeah that's a big his concession that's out there you know ideally it should never cost you anything to go to a bank to get a mortgage you know it's like closing costs and stuff but for that service or with a broker um brokers actually get paid from a lot of the lenders to bring the big list to that so as an example if a broker brings a client to you know Socha tv one of the big banks or to one of the model lines such as the mcap or first nationals they actually get paid a finder's fee to actually bring that mortgage to the lender so it shouldn't cost the customer anything in those circumstances and some of the lenders on the prime side have actually gone as far as putting with their policies that if they catch a broker charging with a tourist customer in those circumstances and you know all of these procedures we know that they will get cut off from having access to that lender for do so, which we really love at Prime Out because we want to bring down the customer in, in this situation. Um, on the alternative side, it's usually shorter terms. The broker gets paid less, but when you're doing a one-year term and when you're trying to graduate that customer from an alternative space to the prime space, you're renewing that again and again. So you know you've made half of what you did on the five-year term, you to look at it holistically. So most brokers that I know in our folks don't charge anything on the alternative or the private side. Where fees can come into play, though, is in the private lending space because you're filing the private funds, you're not getting a finder's fee from the private lender, and therefore you could get charged fee of, you know, 1% to 2% is where we'd like to see it. I have to get by compliance team, notify us if any broker in our account because it's charging more than two and a half percent on a private mortgage. Oh, wow. And I want an explanation as to why, because, you know, that space is not as stubborn and we want to make sure that our brokers who are using the private mortgage space, because a lot of times it's that 
you know, you're helping a customer get out of a situation, well, there's short term and public demand for that, or investors. Mm-hmm. A lot of investors have to use private funds here because in Canada, they have, you know, restrictions on the number of doors they're allowed to use. So in those circumstances, they should be the only times really that you're getting charged any type of fee from a mortgage worker. That's good to know. And I think anyone watching this, hopefully has learned from that. If they, if they weren't aware before, maybe it's not so scary going out there and talking to a mortgage broker. Well, again, not versus a bank. It's just a better option for the consumer. Like we talked about earlier, you know, having access to the banks, the model life, all for you. Retain a credit rule is one of the cool things about having credit unions in our portfolio is the fact that they're, they don't stress test mm-hmm. because they're provincially regulated. So sometimes that stress test of that extra 2% is eliminating you from getting it to that pull of, well, your broker knows that you get a you know your favorite bonus this year or you, know, you just had a new job so you're going to be making more money and you can't afford that in order to qualify the, the credit unions that really help for in that regard so having all those different types of lenders with one person that doesn't cost you anything most times to use it is a better choice for this one so when you go to a bank do they typically have alternative finance inclusions and private mortgages and no they actually, uh, some of the big banks do have referral programs, but some of the all lenders in that space, so they will hand off a customer that doesn't fit their portfolio to an alternative lender. Um, but that's another reason why we get a lot of base specialists coming over to the broker side once they're more scary is because they don't want to know as a customer. They have their, you know, five or six products that they're able to sell, and if it doesn't fit in that bucket, they had to have to send them away or refer it off to, you know, the alternative program, referral program that they have inside the bank. You have to know how to say no to a customer. You can always give the customer an option. There's an answer and an option for every single person that comes to you for a mortgage, just whether or not they decide to move forward. But and moving from the bank to the broker side it allows that opening up evolving seed products that you have access to private funds and have access to the alternative space. You have access to reverse mortgages. You know, we have a lot of baby boomers that are coming up that worked really hard that are house rich because they've done really well. You know, we make Cooper and, and the GTA. They don't want to leave their home because they have all this equity in their home. So they don't, you know, base specialists have access to, to not buy it to them, which they ever had before. I think the key word I got there was option. Well, we've covered a lot of information today, but before we finish off, I'd like to give you the chance to have the floor. I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to cover or. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much for doing this. We are excited about our expansion into the West Coast. We've got some brokers in the Vancouver area now, as well as Alberta and Toba. So we're definitely starting to make our foothold out here. Really want to drive positive change for all stakeholders, whether it's the community C winner, the realtor partners, the lawyers, anybody that's a part of this process with us. You're going to be seeing a lot more of us out here, and uh, we look forward to working. We have to look. Do you want to let people know where they can find you, contact information? What Absolutely. Do. So the best place to go is to go pineapple.com. There you can search for a broker or you can find out more about Pineapple. You can take a look at, you know, the different things that we do on the consumer side. If you're a mortgage broker that happens to be watching this, our Powered by Pineapple will give you more information on the technology. It's word and culture and training and all the different things that we do to provide the best and you know, optimal environment for mortgage brokers. So those would be the two websites. Canadian consumers, if you're looking to do that pre-qualification and have a broker reach out and go through the documentation, really set them up for success when they come to you, Alex. It's right online, find a broker, go through the pre-qualification and then someone will reach out to you to actually get you that pre approval like we talked about earlier. So Instagram handles are um, pineapple mortgage, or empowered by Pineapple, and you can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, all particular social channels as well. Oh, yeah, so that's why we have the pineapple here today. That's why you have the pineapple here today. So I just want to thank you again for coming on and being interviewed today. You provided a lot of good information. So if anybody has questions, wants to reach out, whether you're a consumer or a mortgage broker, there will be contact information down below. If you're looking to buy or sell in Surrey Langley or the rest of the Fraser Valley, my contact information is there as well. And you can scroll down and put a call at a time that looks best for you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.